are watching Property TV. Welcome to Property Question Time. I'm Stephen Galvin and this is the programme where you can have your property related questions answered by our team of experts. And joining me today, Hayley Andrews, founder and CEO of Your Freedom Empire. Hi Hayley. Hello. Good to have you back. It's good to be back. Great. And on your right is John Howard, founder, uh, developer, investor, author and mentor. Yeah, I don't do much mentoring, to be fair. Don't you? No. I thought you did quite a More lot. consultancy, to be fair, if right. I get asked. But um, Okay. Yeah. Well, very knowledgeable, whatever Thank you want you. to uh, Thank you. describe good yourself to be back. as. Thank and, you. And good to have you. Okay, so um, Hayley, we're going to start with you. And your question is a very topical one. The current round of interest rate rises will no doubt affect all property owners with mortgages or loans set against their properties. In particular, buy to let business owners who may already have been working on tight margins and may now go into a loss situation if they have a short short old tenancies with no opportunity of increasing rents what would the panel suggestions be as how to minimize any consequences of these interest rate rises and how to protect a business in the future from such fluctuation of costs good question um, so we I hope actually. You've got a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's hope so. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Um, so um, in the question, it says about them being in a fixed-term tenancy, so they can't mm. increase the rents. Um, so firstly, I'd say have a look at that tenancy. What is the fixed term, and when can you increase the rents? Because that's that's what needs to happen. Um, Are you suggesting oper sort of if you could operate a break clause, for instance? Well, normally, uh, so if you if you were on a six months fixed term, it would then go to a rolling tenancy. So outside of the fixed term, you can issue notice yeah. to increase rents. Right. You can't do that during a fixed term period. Um, so that's uh, this is why we only issue six months um, uh, ASTs. Hmm. It doesn't mean we want to move them out at the end of that so, term, but we don't issue a new fixed term. They go on to a month by month. That is allows good because us I, 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 I'm guessing that I mean, for, from the letters we get in and the information we often get is people tend to think, wow, if I can get a 12 month tenancy, yeah. I'm really doing good. And it's quite I, common for you know. lettings agencies to talk to landlords and put them in and, you know, and convince them to go into a 12 month contract mm. because it's security for that 12 for their, months. And, for their fees. and that's how it's sold. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. But it actually lets flexibility for you as the landlord and it doesn't really affect your occupancy level mm. anyway. Um, so um, we always issue a six months tenancy. So that would be the first thing that I would do because that allows you flexibility to increase the rent should mm. you need to in the near future. Um, the other thing to do is, of course, um, speak to a broker to make sure that you're on the right product. Um, you're not overpaying. I mean, it's predicted that it's 3.5% um, uh, rise, isn't it, mm. for the, the Bank of England base rate? If mm. Well, that's what experts are saying. Mm. If it goes to that, that will have a profound mm. impact, well, negative impact on landlords mm. and then hence tenants. Mm. Whatever happens, and I think this is the unbalance here what 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 people don't see is they change something for a landlord but that then changes the for model the tenancy, for the tenant yeah. Yeah, and it and it has to we're a business at the end of the day um so it, it what what happens to one it has to be passed over to the other it's the same as any business isn't it if it costs you something more to provide <clears> a service or to produce a product then you charge more for that product mm. or service um i think the other thing you can do is um make overpayments on on your mortgage to reduce mm -hmm. your interest amount yep. or interest payment um, where and if you can um, and then we always stress test so on any future deals that you are looking to buy um, make sure that you stress test the interest rates we do that anyway you know we've done that for the past 10 years plus um, so we always stress test the rents and make sure that they still stack up in the event of interest rate rises mm -hmm. And where, where do you get those calculations from? Is there something on the net that you can just chime into? Or? 
No, no. So there's nothing. You've got to look at obviously trends with rents and things like that. But then you've got to look at well, what happens if it does go up three point five percent or or four or even higher. Um, so looking at the base rate <coughs> and um, the current interest rate that you have, um, put it, it, stress testing that should they go up however many points. I mean, we normally do six to make sure it's stress test. So this means a lot of deals don't work or meet the buy to let criteria. Mm. You know, and that and it's a very strict criteria. So what we will have if it does go up three point five percent, which is you know what what they're predicting, um, you will have many properties that actually won't qualify for buy to let lending, mm. because if the rent isn't increased in line with that interest rate rise, right. it won't meet the bank stress mm. test, their RTI calculation. But Haley, look, you, you, you're a very experienced business lady. You're very experienced in this market. I wonder how many people actually are I mean, i'm talking about i think the government like to turn them accidental landlords well this is this is the issue isn't it you know it, it's going to be people that perhaps haven't had that knowledge or mm. education up front or even know how just to find out what business mm. they're stepping into i mean these things can happen we've been spoilt with historically low interest rates oh, for a really well, long time absolutely. Uh, but that's so some people have been kind of you know of, have a, a false sense of security as yeah. such. Um, it's going to massively affect the buy, uh, affect, in fact, <laughs> maybe <laughs> may well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, affect the buy to let yeah. um, market. Yeah. Um, and we'll have a lack of private rental properties coming to the market as a result, which yeah. will just push well, rents that, even but higher. That's not all bad news. And let me tell you why it's not all bad news. Because the government, uh, a, 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 the government want more first-time buyers to have the opportunity to buy homes. And at the moment, a lot of these are being bought by buy-to-let investors instead. So actually, I think in you'd many be surprised. Ways, actually, I think you'd be surprised at the actually. The government are quite pleased about this. Happening. Yeah, I, 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 I assume that's the route they are going yeah. down, forcing people into saying, well, actually, it's cheaper for me to buy than it is Absolutely. to rent. Yeah. But it's not just about your monthly figure that you have to pay mm. to your landlord or to your mortgage. Mm. It's about maintaining the property, it's about the deposits, it's about furnishing that property, yeah. you know, and many people don't have that that pot of cash no. available to do it. No, but I, I think what the government are, tr are going to do, and I might, I might be wrong here, but I think what they're going to do, they're saying, look, people will pay a lot more rent, uh, they'll pay a lot of rent in order to rent a property, um, and actually the mortgage on the whole would be cheaper, but most building societies wouldn't lend to them as much per month as they would as they're paying on a on a on a on a rental. So what their argument is, well hang on a minute, if they can pay that if they can pay the rent and prove they can pay the rent at that level, then why on earth can't they have a mortgage at that level? But, but John, don't don't you think I mean it's all very well to say the government are looking at that from, from that point of view. Mm, definitely. Do you really think the government are that interested whether whether anybody buys or not? It's not yes, some, it's not some are. it's yes. not some nicety <clears throat> they're coming up with. No. All they're doing is alleviating the pressure on rented homes from the councils. I think to be I think you're doing uh, the government a disservice there because I think they well three things uh, well three things one thing is, is when you go to the, the the conference every year how the conservative conference housing is the biggest issue they're trying to deal with they, they spend a lot of time talking about it at the conference and they have done for the last three or four years they know how important it is because housing is the, is, is, is a basic need for everyone whether you're renting, whether you're purchasing. Exactly. And they realise that. And what they're trying to do, is, as I said to you, I think in the past where, you know, in 1980s, 50% of um, people between the age of 25 and, and 34 could buy a home. Now it's that, uh, between that, those two age groups, it's now 29%. They needed to get back up to 50% because they will vote Tory apart from anything else if they own their own home. Yeah. I think what they do is they focus on lack of opportunity, as in, Oh, the first time buyers are in competition with investors. And that's not always the case. Actually, well, sometimes it's a lifestyle choice to rent. Yes, I understand. Because they that. can rent in a better area, a nicer yes. property. Um, more flexibility. More flexibility yes. with their jobs, but movement. I, I, I can remember having this conversation 20 years ago when everybody says, Are we going to get more like Europe, where people think it's a, a, a bit of an oddity to go and buy your own home? No, why, we won't. Why would you? No, we won't. Oh, I think we have gone. No, I way. don't think so. 64% of the UK own their own home. It was 68, 69. That, that, that differs because of you know, different e um, economics and so on. The, the truth is, these, these buy to let investors have had it too easy for too long. And they all think it's not a business, it's easy to do, I've got a bit of spare cash and the rest of it. 
now they're going to find out that it is a business and they need to sharpen up and do the job properly. That's what's going to happen. Okay, really. that, that's, that's, I, that's a fair comment. Really, but yeah. if there's any really? any other business that is out there, so if you're yeah. running a grocery store, yes. if it costs you more money to uh, produce that product, then you have to put that you have to put the price up. If you can, if the market allows you to. But then you just close business. Well, how, is that, how is that a positive well, impact? If you get, sorry, you've already yeah. got many people in Wales, something like 35% of private rental sector, mm. leaving the marketplace well, the government, because it the, doesn't but the work. But the government think that's good because the government want prices to come down so first time buyers can buy. But so, tell so that the to the local authorities where their lists are 3.6 million. <laughs> but they're people who can't buy anyway. But they want them to be able to buy still with the right, right. to buy. Now, on that note, we're going to have to move on. <laughs> so, um, John, we'll you're... Continue yes. this next <laughs> we'll week. Yeah. You can do it outside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll put we'll my boxing we'll film, gloves on. Let's we'll film that as well. Yeah. <laughs> right, OK. John, um, sta staying with the government theme, Although the government has introduced new planning regulations, which in part were designed to ease the supply shortages widely reported in the housing market, not much seems to have eased. I'm referring to measures like permitted development rights and the like. Do the panel think that the government has done enough to address the shortages? And if not, what would the panel suggest they do in addition to the current measures? There you okay. go. You can have a go at that one. Okay. So. Uh, permissive development, PD, came in uh, in a big way in 2013, 12, 13, with offices to residential. The government um, threatened the local authorities, if you don't allow commercial to become residential, we're going to force it on you. And that's exactly what they did. They forced it on every council, rightly so, because the councils for years and years and years have turned uh, you down, Hayley, I'm sure, and myself and other developers down, saying, oh, because they don't want to use the commercial, they don't want to lose the commercial rates. That's the truth of it. So they were forced down this route. Now, when you're forced down a route, uh, it, it's an uncomfortable situation. And, and more recently, the rules have changed. They've widened the rules, so shops can be residential and so on now, but they've also tightened them up in other areas. Um, now, have they done enough? No. Is there a housing shortage? Huge housing shortage in the south of the country, in the north. There is a housing shortage in certain areas, but other areas, there isn't a housing There's shortage. There's an oversupply. There's an oversupply yeah. in certain cases. But that's the point. It needs to be in the right areas, doesn't Spot it? on. So what I would do, I would give, I would make it much easier to build on brownfield sites because there's a lot of brownfield sites that aren't built on because of contamination, uh, uh, archaeological digs and all sorts. So I've, um, I would speak to the government, which I have done actually, about um, we had a site in Ipswich which had archaeological dig, all sorts of problems with it, which we knew when we bought it, we could afford to buy and, and do it. That's now having 68 flats built on it. Um, and I took the housing minister at the time, Robert Janet around, explained to him the reason why these brownfield sites, brownfield sites aren't being developed is because the risk of contamination and all the rest of it. He said he would look into it, of course. Now, he, then he lost his job. Mm. As usual, they all lose the job one way or the other. But somehow they need to um, incentivize councils to clean up these brownfield sites and then put them on the market for the residential um, developers. Because a lot of residential developers won't take risks like we do. They want them clean and ready to go. That would help. The other thing, if you put tax incentives up north to get people to move up north, then new houses will be built up north. OK, thank you for that. And um, well, after that um, feisty debate, um, I don't get to give my opinion. <laughs> I, no, not now. <laughs> we, have, we, we unfortunately, I either have to or need to go for a break after after, after that. So join me again after break when uh, John and Haley will be in conversation again. You are watching Property TV. You are watching Property TV. Hello, welcome back to part two of Property Question Time, um, where we're having some lively debate between uh, <laughs> jo John and Haley, we'll so, <laughs> <laughs> which has carried on and probably carry on after the show too. Uh, so, um, Haley, your second question. I have a number of HMO properties and I'm now concerned about the huge increase in costs relating to heating and hot water. 
The heating and hot water costs are sourced from a communal system, albeit that electricity is supplied metered to each room. I'm told that because it is a communal system, once my fixed energy contracts end as the landlord, I will be subject to open market prices outside of any government imposed cap. With the Bank of England suggesting that even the high costs of today go up by another 40% in October, yeah. can the panel offer any suggestions as how I could limit these costs for myself and for my tenants? Yeah, it's a huge, huge topic at the mm. moment and a huge issue for HMO landlords. Um, so it's, it's absolutely right if they're on, uh, you know, if they're on a commercial plan, then they, you know, they they need to renegotiate basically mm. as soon as they're outside of their t their fixed term um so i think the thing you can do really is look at how you can save money as a landlord um to try and help um with the rising cost of you know utility bills and and things like that with the property and um, so um obviously you can make sure that the property is as as energy efficient as it possibly can be mm. um, to reduce your overheads. Um, she's saying that there's electric meters already on the on the property. Can they go all electric? You know, would that be better for them to do that? And then, mm. you know, reduce the rent as a result if they're outside of fixed so terms and you, change uh, the model. So if, if you were to say, um, put electric um, s sort of uh, radiator heaters into the rooms instead of using the communal system mm. that would then be covered by any cap um so a majority of my stuff are on commercial plans but as far as i'm aware a hmo can fall under residential so it doesn't yeah. have to be a commercial plan if you're <laughs> on a commercial plan and that's how it's been set up then that's what you've got yeah. um, but it doesn't have to be a commercial plan mm. there's no as far as I'm aware, um, there's no rules to say that it's a household, it's still a residential use classification. Mm. Um, it, it's a home. It doesn't matter that there's five or six tenants living there. Um, so, you know, I, I'd look into that first of all. Mm. Um, I think, just I to think the EPC is a problem, isn't it? How would, you find, how would you find the energy companies? Would they, would they be helpful in that kind of situation? Would they come and talk to you about it? Would they? <laughs> Mm. I, the the bane of your life will be talking to energy companies and uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't do any of those conversations and haven't for a very long time. So uh, you can get an energy um, broker to a yeah, utility yeah. That's, broker that's to a, that's a good idea, Hayley. To have a look yeah. at what the best yeah. plan would be for you, yeah. and they would be fully aware of what yeah. plans you'd be able to get access to. The, the main thing you can do to control, you can, we can't control it. If we can't control it, then focus on what we can control. And I think that's the biggest yeah, that's a good point. Biggest but point. I, think, I think part of the problem is you, you, you'll have a number of tenants in there that because they're on f fixed rents, with, including well, heating, they'll, exactly. they've really not got and much this interest is not, in not This you know. is not new. This no. has been an issue forevermore with HMO ones. landlords. Um, one of the things we are trialing <coughs> at the moment, um, and it's a trial at this moment in time, so I can't say whether it will be successful or not, but it is a, a house credit plan um, uh, where if the tenants, so we agree a fair usage policy, um, which is seasonal. Um, so of course, in the summer months, they would use less, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, that's agreed as the household as just a general agreement. And if they don't spend that money, whatever they don't spend, they get credited to their house account and it goes back to them, effectively reducing their rent. I like that. So, mm. yeah, I actually came up with that idea. That's really good. So we're doing that at this moment in time to try and incentivize good behavior because mm. you do have tenants that think, oh, I'm on a fixed rate, it yeah, doesn't, doesn't matter. I'll go out and leave the lights on in my bedroom all that, day. And that's where oh. the business model fails, isn't it? Let's be honest, if yeah. you're not in control, of the whole investment. And you really... can control it better now than you could 10 years ago. Yeah. You've got all OWL systems, um, yeah. which um, uh, you know you can monitor remotely and you yeah. can watch the behavior well, of the I'll tenants. Switch it off remotely as well. Well, you set Heating. a plan, so you set the property up on, you know, yeah. set times, okay. set temperatures, um, and of course the property is kept to that temperature. Mm. And then it goes on and off uh, based on the tenant's behavior, you know, if they mm. work in shifts or anything like that, or mm. nine till five, of course. It's so it's efficient in that way, but also the tenants still have, you're not restricting them, controlling the heating no. themselves. They have a boost button that they can press. So if they are cold, 
you know, mm. they just compress cost, it. Just cost them more money. But it comes on for one yeah. one hour yeah. and then goes off. So it's not accidentally yeah. left on by one tenant that leaves and then the next yeah. tenant comes in, opens the windows because it's too hot. Mm. And so it's, it's about controlling and promoting it, but it's good not, behavior. But Hayley, it's not a good business model. If you can't, if you can't honestly, in, they all need well, to be. I hope in, they all need to be. I own a large HMO uh, for, they all ought to be. They all ought to be independent in the first place. In the yeah. old days, you know, and I'm going back to the old days, uh, uh, to uh, electric meters, for instance, you know, we, we they, it was five pence, <laughs> it was five, then it was, then it was 10p, then it was 50p, but we used to, they all had electric meters mm -hmm. or they were on their own. So they, they had no heat apart from electric. The problem with electric is EPCs are lower if you've got mm -hmm. electric heating, then you have gas heating. Mm. But one, one point um, uh, to go on very quickly from that is I'm buying two properties at the moment. One is a block of 11 flats in a big house, shared heating, nightmare. We're going to have to get rid of all the shared heating. And if they're watching, I'm sorry, but that's tough. And go on to independent heating for each flat. And the other one is a grade two listed um, country house that's in offices. And that's all shared as well. And I'm paying the rent on all that. So that's going to have to change. Sorry about that, tenants, but that's what will happen. So I make them totally independent yeah. from day one if I buy it. I'm not messing And I think around. that's what you'll see. Either yeah. rent increase you know, or, or yeah. you know, incentive plans, which incentive we're hoping plan is a that's good what, idea. what, you know, yes. we're hoping that mm. will promote good behaviour. Yeah. It's good for the tenants because then but, instead but, of the rent rising, they're getting money back in their pockets. But, but Hayley, why, and I understand we're that, saving why, why didn't you make bills? them independent from day one? <sighs> you asked me that question. Well, no, no. <laughs> I, I mean, because in the old days, that's how it used to be with meetings. Because that's not, that's yeah. not the trend and that's not, that wasn't the model. That wasn't what tenants were looking for. Yeah, they would favour an all-inclusive rent. I mean, I mean en energy hasn't been an issue for years, has it? It's, we've, had it, 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 we've all had it too good for too long. Yeah, it's, true, oh, it's the truth. I, you know, again, we stress test these things. So we yeah. make sure that we put a percentage of the rent aside for these things. Mm. And, that's you, it, know, well, you do, monthly... but do, you do because you're very organised and professional. But do these other tenant landlords? Well, I don't think they do. Then this is what they need to do. Yeah, you know, well, they this need is, to learn, don't they? So mm. if, if something, either that, or you'll just have everybody selling their HMOs. Well, I, th I think you will. I think <laughs> well, you will. I, I don't want to be totally dismal about this, but, you know, John and I will probably remember the 15% interest rate. Absolutely. That we all had to get used to. We all yeah. had to change our yeah. business models, yeah. our ideas, and our, yeah. and our costings. We did. And I think we're heading for those times again. We've, yeah. You know, we've had too much cheap energy for such a long time. I mean, don't forget, it's only, it's only months ago ago that oil was down at was it twenty five dollars mm. a barrel and then what yeah. is it now 104 105 yeah. today yeah. um you know we're talking about the bank of england saying about energy cap costs going up by 40 percent in yeah. october from i've already just gone up yeah i, I mean it's huge amount you know life's going to change 56 unfortunately percent it went up didn't mm. it mm. Yeah. something like yeah. that did, yeah. okay right moving on john yes as a result of the Ukraine conflict, the government has taken action to sanction and freeze property assets owned by faceless offshore companies, Good. hiding the real identity of the owners. Many European countries have regulations that require any similar ownership practices to put forward a responsible uh, representative of the owners, usually a firm of accountants or solicitors. <laughs> These representatives... It's debatable. Hold on. These these, <laughs> these representatives become personally responsible for the liabilities yeah. and responsibilities connected with the property. Would the experts think that this should be introduced in the UK? Well, it's a, it's a very uh, that, I think that's been that's been sent in by someone close to the close to the situation. Don't Probably you? somebody who owns Chelsea or whatever. I don't you know. do wonder because it's a very complex question. So anyway. For the last 15 years or so... That's kept you quiet, hasn't it? The, the, the has got to think of a political the, the government, you know, correct the, answer. The, <laughs> the governments, thank you, both Labour and Tory have encouraged Russian investment and investment from overseas and they've given them great did, benefits. Did, did I say also. anything about Russia? No, no you didn't. Right. But okay. I'm just saying uh, they would be one of the parties that has benefited from you know, paying 30000 a year to live in the UK, um, all the protection that gives, the legal protection that gives as well. A lot of divorces have happened in the UK. From, from you know, foreign investors have come here to got and got divorced because it's considered the best, the best legal system in the world. Um, some have lived here, some haven't, um, and they've come here. Um, really, the idea is that you allow 
very high net worth people to come to the UK. They spend a lot of money in the UK and it benefits the whole, whole of the, the whole of the population. That hasn't really happened as it's benefited a lot of um, landowners in London and quite a few estate agents and a lot of lawyers. That's mm. the truth. Mm. So, and we did more in the UK than any, any other country in Europe. So we attracted these people. So we attracted them in. Uh, and now we're saying, well, hang on a minute. Um, we're going to get tough with you, tougher than we have been, sanctions and so on. I think it's a, it is a little bit um, uh, shutting, the, shutting the stable door off the horse is bolted because yeah, a lot of them have got UK passports now, but considered UK citizens. Um, but certainly what's made, been made clear of this dreadful uh, situation in Ukraine is that we allowed, that the, the rules were too lax and we allowed this to happen. Uh, and now we're trying to play catch up with the rest of Europe, which isn't easy. No. So I think, yes, there does need to be more. And I think it's a fine line for me, though, it's it? a fine line. And for me, you know, you could argue that the relatives of, of the people who have been sanctioned also should be sanctioned because they've benefited from this money that's come in. You know, the families are, are still here sometimes, but it's the actual only person that's being sanctioned. I think, so I think we need to get much tougher. I agree. I think I, I, I think in, in, in some ways, John, you're right. But I, I think the I, I think the question here is too narrow. But people invest in the UK property because we have some of the safest yes. property laws Agreed. in the world. Absolutely. If you buy a property here, it's not like other countries where you could suddenly find Take that you bought you. it off somebody who doesn't even own it yes, or yeah. debts have stayed with yes, the property or yes. whatever. We, we, we've got really good property laws. I think the problem is that those laws have not altogether kept up with modern day society, modern day wealth, the, the billions that certain people have now. And I think, I think it's only a small fraction of those laws that need to be changed, yes, but I think I some of them do. No. And I think we need to get up to date. Yeah. And it seems to me to have somebody, if you're not a UK national, but you want to be here with property, then I think you really should have a, a, a responsible representative here that, that can make decisions, that will make the right decisions, and yes. insist you pay your dues here. Yes, of course, there are government systems uh, um, incentives even now for high net worth individuals if they invest five million pounds into a UK company mm. they get a special passport to come mm. and live in the UK mm. so it, it, you know we're always encouraging mm. these types of people into the UK a lot of them are very bona fide absolutely fine but we're doing it all the time um, and probably rightly so because we do need these people in the country who are going to invest in businesses and so on but I agree with you they need to have a representative in the UK, based in the UK, not mm. based in the Cayman mm. Islands, mm. based in the UK, who is responsible and legally responsible for them. OK, well, that's all we've got time for today. So, Hayley Andrews, thank you very much indeed thank for you. coming in. John Howard, thank you. It's a pleasure. Always good answers. Thank you both very much indeed. I'm Stephen Galpin. That's all we've got time for today. So join me next time on Property Question Time.